Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Today, what I'm hoping to do is let you know all about a new game that showed up this week here at uh, the Casa de Bellhop, and that is Mountains Out of Mole Hills from the Op. This is a game with table presence that I am really looking forward to. It's a programmed movement game. Um, with some really interesting looking components that I can't wait to see um, in real life. I've only ever like, you know, saw the product pages and stuff like that in the Board Game Geek page. Um, this looks really fantastic game. It's an abstract strategy program movement game. And those are a bunch of words together that is something I love. So join me as I crack open my copy of Mountains on a Mohills. Before I get to that, though, thank you, Op, for sending us a review copy of this game. So here you have... My copy of Mountains Out of Mole Hills. All I've done at this point is crack open the shrink wrap. Uh, this is a game for, what's it say, ages 9 plus? Yes, 9 plus, 2 to 4 players. You're looking at 45 minutes to an hour. This is not just a quick filler game. There is, for, despite looking like a silly kids game that's very toyerific, um, this looks to be actually a very solid game. So first I will point out the rather unique box size. This is not quite your usual board game box size, and I gotta say I'm probably gonna get a little annoyed with how it sits on my shelf. But you know what? If the gameplay's worth it, so it is. Look what we're gonna take a look at here, though. Just look at that. Wait till you see it in person, right? All right, first we have the digging guide. So this is the instructions. Oh, I gotta say, compared to other games I just looked at, this is nice and thin. Oh, really great component list, like actual pictures. Those aren't even renders, I don't think, of the components. They might be renders. They still, they look really good. Showing what we're going to have in the box, um, the different boards, the components, how to set up on one page with nice numbers. I love that when they're like, one, do this, two, do this, and they show you a picture of it. Really nice. Uh, getting into the actual gameplay. Gameplay, we're looking at two pages here, three pages, four pages of gameplay, and movement card summary on the back showing you the cards and how your characters are going to move. Now, this is a program movement game, so think games like Robo Rally. Then we have the player board. One of the two, oh, sorry, this is, this is the inside, the bottom player board. So this is the board you're going to use with um, three or four players, and this is the side you're going to use with two, because it's just much smaller, a little more competition going on there. And then we have the upper board, which, again, there are two sides. There's a reason for this being darker, because when you're playing three players, the hills only grow in this area. So this is nice and thick, like really. That might even be MDF. Not, no, it's cardboard. For a minute, I was thinking it might be MDF. Really nice thick boards. What do we have here? Oh, just like a, a piece of cardboard to protect everything. Cool. Well, I'm just doing some peeking here. Let's see what we got. Okay. Where do we want to start? Here, let's start here. Score pad. Nice, thick, two-sided, thank you. Hate it when companies do one-sided. Like, why not let me use both sides of your score pad? Score pad. Turn counters and the rock. Everything's punched. Just kicked in, clicked in. Everything here is punched. So these are randomized every turn, handed out to players to figure out turn order at the beginning of the game, but then later there's another way to do that. I'm not here to teach you how to play, though. And this is the rock. The rock becomes like a blocking piece that can be put on. So you have counters for that. I got to say, upgrading to a 3D rock seems really cool. There is a die. This die goes on the rock. When someone runs into the rock, this determines where they turn. So if you hit the rock, you would then turn left. You hit the rock, you would then do a U-turn. So little custom die here. It is not etched. It is silk screened with different ways you turn when bumping into the rock. Then we get something the op seems to be becoming well known for. And I got to say, I like it. While I dig miniatures and while I dig meeples, the new trend in board gaming we are starting to see is acrylic standees. So here you have an acrylic standee for the blue. I, I'm guessing blue. I don't even know which color is supposed to be which here. Red. I don't, I'm not sure which, which of these, but you would put this into whichever appropriate one. I don't want to force it in because I got to figure out which color is which. So we have awesome looking moles. I say as a Warhammer Skaven fan, I appreciate the look of these acrylic standees. Nice, cool touch. And I got to say, this is a very 3D looking game. So seeing these stand up on the board is probably going to look really good. 
This looks like he's mostly yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slot this in. Not an easy fit, but it's snapped in. I don't feel I need to use glue, and I don't think that's going to fall off. I'm going to keep this guy out because I think I'm going to want to set up the board with these moles. So we're going to toss these back in. Now the other thing should point out. So this is the thing a lot of people may not realize about these that I'm glad I heard someone else point out. They come with a film protecting them. You're going to want to remove that before playing. And now you can really see how clear these are. Much shinier than the kind of hazy look that it had before. So yes, you are going to want to remove the plastic film, which I've got to say, I didn't, if no one had told me, if I didn't know those were there, I would have had no idea there was a film to remove on these. So you're going to remove the film and there's a film on the bases too, which I'm not going to bother at this point. Okay, cards are boring. So we're going to take a look over here at the pieces. So what we have here are the towers that you literally shove into the corners of the box. What you want to watch for here is you want to leave the one with the notch at the top. Those go in pretty good. No complaints here. Yep, there we go. So <laughs> my camera is really showing that off well. Then we have the mole hills in the four different player colors. I realize they're kind of unique colors, but from what I understand, that's done for color blindness. Instead of having your usual, what we have here are mole hills that stack together. And I got to say, they are made of a nice rubbery plastic. No, it's not even rubbery. Like, it's got some give to it, which makes me think you're not going to have to worry about them breaking. They fit together nicely. We got a whole bunch of mole hills. Putting them back in like this may be terrible. Maybe I need to stack them. Um, in different player colors. Yeah, that was probably a terrible idea for trying to repackage this. <laughs> We're just going to dump them in here. Lots of actual mole hills. Nice plastic components that, yes, I think you're going to want to actually stack together to put back in the box normally. Fair enough. So that's it for those components. So what you would do here, we're going to toss some of this back in because I don't need it. Where I don't know where the die was. Was the die over there under the this book? Um, this piece, I think I'm just going to toss. And then, well, this board goes on top. And yeah, that slots in pretty nicely. But what you can't really see here is we're going to switch over. Check that out. That is the board for this game. Oh, I forgot bottom part. You are going to put the bottom part. Oh, you have to do that first. This is really neat, actually. So there you go. Here's your player board. And what you're going to have is your moles are down here doing stuff. Like here, you can kind of see the standy. You can kind of see it there. So you've got your mole here who's going to move underneath. And every time they move, they're going to put a mole hill up above. What's nice here is it actually says A, B, C, D. Oh, see, I don't actually have it together correctly. The numbers need to match up. <laughs> So over here, you can say it's, it says one, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four. So if my mole was here at 3A and then moved here and here, I would put mole hills here and here. And then if another player moved underneath me, you would put mole hills underneath, which I got to say, component quality, th these are nice. Like the, the texture of these, the way these feel, uh, the board's very, very solid. I wouldn't sit on it, but, and then these standees do look really cool. All right, so we have one more component to look at, which is the cards, which is how you're going to move your moles. So let's take a look at the cards and mountain out a mole hill. So first thing you'll notice, hobbit size cards, half size cards, pretty typical nowadays to see. I have to assume they did this to um, prevent card counting because, like, I know, like, they're all just movement cards. So again, I mentioned this is a program movement game. So you're going to draft cards and then you're going to play these to move. So this is move your mole one forward, which, of course, there are a ton of. So that's like the most common action. Then move your mole two forward. Move your mole three forward. And what I like is it's not as obvious on the one and two, but the arrows actually get bigger. So in addition to the number, the arrows actually, like the iconography is different. Um, then there's turn left and move one. Turn right, move one should be in here. Then you've got either turn left or right. U-turn. U-turn and move one. Then we have the rock. When you play the rock card, you then get to put the rock 
somewhere on the board and roll the die to see what happens if anyone runs into the rock. And then you have topple. That I'm going to leave you to discover in a how to play video instead of me talking about here on an unboxing, but the molehills can only go so high or they topple down. So that's all the different movement cards. It's done by playing a drafting game where you're going to put out a bunch, players are going to draft them and then organize four actions in a row. So that's it. That's what you get in the um, very toyetic, toyerific Mountains Out of Molehills board game from the op that I've got to say isn't a kid's game based on the look, though I think kids would enjoy it. This is definitely an abstract strategy game that's going to take some pre-planning, some uh, deduction on trying to figure out what the other players are trying to do while trying to build up your molehill scoring points every round out of six rounds. I gotta say, I'm impressed. That that was even cooler to touch and feel than I expected it to be. And I was looking forward to this one. So here you have it. What you get in the box of for mountains out of molehills. A rather large, uniquely sized box, but for good reason. Because the box comes the board, as I just showed you. Or the boards, uh, I guess. It's a two-layer game where you are using program movement to move moles on the bottom level, which create molehills from them digging up on top. And you're going to score points for your molehills. I'm really impressed by the quality of this game. The 3D um, acrylic standees are really cool. I got to say, they're not quite as neat as miniatures, but it's still, it's, it's better than a standee or a meeple, right? They're a cardboard standee. I got to say, I, I appreciate that. Uh, note for anyone who buys the game, there is a film on them. Remember to remove that. I found it really hard to see. Um, this game looks fantastic. I am really looking forward to playing this one. Thank you for joining me for my unboxing of Mountains Out of Mole Hills. Now, for those of you who are looking to find out just how the game plays and how, what are my thoughts on it, you, all you have to do is follow me on social media, Tabletop Bellhop, one word everywhere. Go to our website, tabletopbellhop.com, and a review will be popping up there, as well as we'll be talking about it on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast that you can find on your podcatcher of voice. Uh, the only thing I got to say other than that is um, if you enjoyed this video, it'd be awesome if you tip the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. And the other thing you can do that is totally free is hit the like, thumbs up, bell, subscribe, all of those things you can do wherever you found this on social media to say that you enjoyed it, which lets the algorithm gods know um, <laughs> that people like it and they will show it to more people, which we always love. So thank you for joining me for my look at Mountains of the Mole Hills, an extremely impressive looking game from the